What's up guys, Jacob from Fuel Tech. Today we're gonna do part two of our series on time-based features. We're gonna show you how to set up an engine RPM curve, another way to do traction control. So we're gonna hop on the laptop, go over some logs and show you how to get that going. All right guys, we're just gonna hop right in it today on the laptop. Just to show you before we go and build the engine curve, you can search in the log like what any of my plots were doing. If you just type in retard, it's gonna come up anything it was doing. Like down here is our nitrous stuff. Rev retard, this is the engine plot. And you can see pretty early in the run, it kinda, kinda ran all over it, but it's not a noticeable slowdown. When you draw this line on the engine curve, you're almost just giving it a shape that you want your converter to flash up and roll over at. So this does, does help for sure on consistency. If you got to go rounds, if you can run plots on the car, it helps out a ton trying to go rounds. So now we're going to hop over to the tune side, show you what this one looks like, and then just build one from scratch with you too. Okay, so now we're back on the tuning side of FT Manager. We're in time-based compensations. We're gonna click load data log file, grab our radio log. And as you guys can see, this is the same one we worked on last week to do the drive shaft curve. Let's turn this stuff off. Make this a little bigger. You can see this is same stuff we built last week's in here still. Now turn this off. Now turn these off for now so we don't have to look at them. All we're worried about today is engine RPM. So we're going to click enable. You can see this thing already had an engine curve in it. Similar to the drive shaft curve, you start with one way up and out of the way so we don't have to worry about it. And then our next line, I mean, this is 0.1. This is a tenth out that it starts using this plot. We'll zoom in on it. Actually, we'll zoom a little more. And you can see this thing was actually running over the curve most of the way right here. But it was pulling timing out. The car went and it kind of follows the shape we wanted it to. If you wanted to go faster from here, you would just move these dots up but we're going to build this from scratch. We're going to assume we don't have a line yet built. So I'm going to do reset zoom. We're going to grab this thing. Honestly, like if I'm building one from scratch, I'll start with just a couple points because I'm going to right click and add point as I go anyways. So we'll grab one second. Sure. Not much going on there. You see it's a pretty big spread here. This was early on running this car, so I left a big range in there just to kind of figure out where the converter and motor naturally wanted to go. Now we have a better kind of a predefined shape. The way to set our limits, like how, kind, how big of a window that is there is in the configure time-based compensations. You can do RPM above, like on this next one, we're gonna tighten this up to I'll say 100 RPM. You can either use RPM or RPM high resolution. Either one is a good option. The high resolution is usually it, the timing moves up and down quicker because this is a very high resolution channel for engine RPM. Like your normal channel is smoothed a little like the high RP, high resolution one. Normally you don't even want to see it because it's so bouncy but it's more realistic. So like if the motor does run over just a fuzz, it'll pull that timing out and bring it back quicker than if you use regular engine RPM. Just to make a smoother curve, make things easier, we're gonna use regular RPM on this one. So we come back, we're 100 RPM over this line. I'm going to just grab and zoom in right here on this initial off the button and the RPM running up. First one is high and out of the way like normal. Our second one, 
we can put right about here. And we're gonna put it right on this RPM line because if it goes any more engine RPM, we want this thing to pull timing out. I personally prefer the engine RPM early over the drive shaft. The thought behind it is, okay, if we use the drive shaft, first the engine's gotta rev up, it's gotta go through the transmission, go through the rear end, it's gotta speed the tire up too much and then we say, oh, take power away. Where this is, right when the motor revs a little higher than we want, it's gonna take timing out and slow it down before we have to rely on the drive shaft curve. And these generally, I do try to get a little more exact than the drive shaft RPM. Not that you shouldn't try to get the drive shaft exact, but this really can take a lot of power away. You see, as we're going, I'm getting right on this line. I'm gonna right click, add a point. And you can see like there, it's almost like we chopped the top of it. Like kind of chopped the top of that little wiggle off. A lot of the times I would maybe add another point here. If you're just trying to make small adjustments, you can hit plus and move your dot up. Because we're trying to give this thing kind of a curved shape and we can't do that with just one or two dots. So next one, we're gonna drag it out a little further. Then after this, like the motor's pretty flat after this point, but still we can plot it out further. This thing does have a little dip in the RPM here. Um, when the progressor finished, there was a little more fuel up there at 90, 100% than it needed, so it was a little rich here. So we're gonna leave this line kind of an ideal shape, let it increase a little through here instead of just a flat across number because if we fix the fueling here, we don't want it to just run through and have to take power out. Generally, I see these engine plots used in first gear only. Um, if the car shifts earlier, shifts later, or something like that, if you tried to plot this the whole track and something was wrong after the gear change off a little bit, then your whole run is gonna be off. I usually see this kind of as a first gear only thing and it's really effective, but you can't normally use it for the whole pass. So now we've got this line drawn out. We'll zoom out, reset zoom. And this thing runs out to one second, most radial cars, unless you're at a very unideal prep situation at the track. If you go out one second, you, you're making the run. Like from there, you can kind of do what you want. So now determining how much power we're gonna let this thing take away is right below it, the timing option here. This says, this is just a basic timing number. This is our 100 RPM range we set below this box just a second ago. We're gonna do, take 10 out. Just for easy math, 10, depending on the application, can be pretty aggressive. Like this car, I think it had eight it could take out at the most in the tune-up. But 10, so basically if we go Fifty RPM over this line, it's going to take five degrees out. If we go all the way up, it's going to take ten degrees out. If it comes, runs over, and then gets back under the line, then we're back to whatever our full timing would be at this part in the run. Uh, this is a really good tool for, like I said, going rounds, uh, slowly speeding the car up. Then our next thing we can build on this is the time-based engine RPM cut. So now similar to the drive shaft, I'm gonna show you guys how to do the engine RPM cut. 
So we're gonna turn this on. We're gonna check, see how many points are in each one of these. Make sure we have the same amount because we're gonna copy and paste stuff over. Then I've been playing a little here already. I know I have the same amount of points. Click copy. Come over here and paste this in. Copy and I'll paste this in over here. So here I'm gonna shorten our run. You can see this line is right on top of that lower line we have, but we want this to take effect after we run over this dotted line on the top. We know that we told it it could have a 100 RPM spread. So we're gonna grab this whole cut line at 100. So we added that 100 RPM there. So now this is right on top of our dotted line. So after it runs the 100 RPM over, pulls out all the timing, we're gonna let it take. It's gonna start the ignition cut, the more aggressive traction control. Again, this is more, more of a no prep, off the trailer situation type thing. Like we've really gotta make a run or we gotta go home kind of thing. So again, the cut is a percentage. This is, we'll put 20, 30, something like that. I'll put 30 on this. So this is 30 of the next 100 ignition events are gonna be cut. If you do a really big number, something above 50, it's it's usually super aggressive. It, it hurts you more than helps you. So we're gonna go 30. The way we set up this window again is in configure time-based compensations. This is 200 RPM, which is fine for math purposes here. So if we go 200 RPM above this line, it's gonna do a 30% ignition cut. If we go 100 RPM above it, it's gonna be a 15% ignition cut. And that's linear the whole way. If we get back down to where we're just in between the red lines, then there's no more ignition cut, just ignition retard. So that's about it on this radio log, what we're gonna do for engine RPM stuff. We're gonna go grab the big tire log and show you guys how to set that one up. Same one we used in the last video. We see the little drive shaft hump early. So let's go to FT manager. So now we're back on FT Manager. We have the correct tune open for this data log. We're gonna load the data log into our time-based. From this, we're not gonna build this one from scratch. It's already got a curve in it. We just built one from scratch. I'm just gonna kind of go over it with you guys and explain why you would do some things a certain way. Let this thing think about it and load for a sec. I'm gonna close this side tab so it's easier to look at. This is our same one we used and built a drive shaft curve off of last week. But something to note, like we talked about last week, is with one of these slick tire cars, it's very common to have a kind of a hump early and the tire grabs. And we don't wanna kill all the power just based on what the tire's doing. So the engine plot is pretty necessary to use in one of these. So we're going to just turn the drive shaft stuff off, less stuff to look at. We're gonna zoom in just in the early part of the run. So you can see instead of manipulating power based off what the tire's doing, we're just pre-plotting in what we want the engine RPM to do. So if we take a little power away based on engine RPM, this is gonna be way smoother, way less aggressive than letting this thing run way over our drive shaft curve and take a ton of power away that way. Again, there's 
tons of different ways to do this. This is just kind of an easy, simple way to get you guys making passes. If we reset the zoom, you can see this thing doesn't run out forever and ever. After 1.5, we're, we're done with the engine curve. That's gonna go out here and make its gear changes. And then from there, you can see right when this is over, we start getting tighter on this drive shaft curve to the line because once the plot runs out on the engine, this is the only thing we have to save us for the rest of the run. If this was a real deal, no prep situation, I would have this drive shaft line tighter on this drive shaft RPM, just because if it's, if it's a really marginal track, backside, something like that, you're gonna want this thing to take power away as soon as possible versus leave a ton of room for this thing to run faster out back. All right, guys, that pretty much wraps up part two of this series. We showed you everything you need to know about setting up an engine RPM curve for traction control. So stay tuned for part three. We're gonna show you the last few things we haven't touched on yet and how to combine everything and use it all together. So stay tuned and we'll see you next Tuesday.